The PlayStation 3 is a great machine, but because of the 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 599 US dollars. A lot of people bought an Xbox 360 instead, but recently a lot of people have been going back hey, to see what PS3 good. greatness they missed out on while they were playing Microsoft's NSA spy device. In this video, I want to take you right back to the beginning and look at the launch games for the PlayStation 3, specifically the Japanese launch titles as it was Japan, the PlayStation 3 was released first before anywhere else. I have a copy of each of the PS3 games I'm going to play for this video, but before we start, let me give you a bit of context. It's November the 11th, 2006, and it's launch day for the PlayStation 3, but only in Japan, as it hasn't come out anywhere else in the world yet, especially not Europe, because we wouldn't see it until March the next year. But it's in Japan now. If you want to buy the Shy Boy 20 gig version with the memory card readers and the Wi-Fi removed, that will set you back 59,000 yen. But what you really want to be getting is the Top Boy 60 gig version. How much will that cost? Well, it's an open price, so you'll pay whatever the shops feel like. So guess what happened? Hello, I like money. The shops went berserk. Look at that PS3 on the right, using 2006 money rates, that's £711. If you adjust that figure for inflation, then that's almost £1,200 in today's money. But wait, there's more! But hold on to your pants because I found an archive of Japan's Yahoo auction site from the PlayStation 3's launch week. You are looking at people that have bid over £2,700 on a PlayStation 3. And when you adjust that for inflation to today's money, that's almost £4,500. It was at this point people started losing their minds. PS3 started changing hands on eBay for four grand. Then eBay had to put restrictions on PS3 sales because this was still the wild west days of the internet and people who didn't even have PS3s were making fake auctions and running away with the money. While over in Japan, people were causing utter chaos on Yahoo auctions. They were creating accounts, bidding billions of yen on a PlayStation 3 and then cancelling their bids at the last minute, meaning no one who actually wanted a PlayStation 3 could actually bid because troll bids were enough to bankrupt the entire country. So with all this utter madness surrounding the console, the games for it must have been incredible, right? Well, not so much. But one last thing before we begin, a lot of English websites wrongly reported that Konami's Mahjong Fight Club was a launch game, but it was actually came out five days after the launch. It's not worth talking about it as it's just a crap Mahjong game. So now, let's talk about the actual PS3 games that you could play on day one in Japan. Game number 10001, the very first PS3 game ever, is Ridge Racer. Ridge, Ridge Racer. Racer! Ridge Racer! Up until the PlayStation 4, it was tradition that every new PlayStation console launched with a Ridge Racer game. And Ridge Racer 7 for the PS3 was not just an excellent Ridge Racer game, but was also a great introduction to this new world of full HD 1080p gaming that the PlayStation 3 was offering. Because this game came out actually running at 60 frames per second, and at the actual 1080p resolution that Sony were advertising. Unlike now with a PlayStation 5 that sports the very optimistic 8K claim on its packaging, as well as being faster and sharper than Sonic the Hedgehog's gentleman's area, you've got cars to earn, many great tracks to race on, online modes to compete in, and even Xevious to play when you first boot the game up. I mean, just look at this game, look at it, it's fantastic. It's such a shame that the next one is not as good. The second PS3 game is number 10002. It's Mobile Suit Gundam Target Insight, and it's shit. 
which is quite the achievement really, because it's big robots with guns. How do you mess that up? Well, you screw that up by having controls that make you feel like you're trying to maneuver a quadriplegic man, levels blander than a Lady Decade YouTube video, all while chugging along at 20 frames per second. I don't have much luck when it comes to PlayStation Gundam games. In 2007, I was in a shop in Tokyo looking for a new game for my PS3. I spotted Gundam Musu, which is wasn't available back in England at the time. It's basically Dynasty Warriors, but Gundam. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted it. But there was another guy also looking at the same PS3 games. He told me it was the best game on the system. I mean, he was Japanese, so he actually said something like, Oh, Gundam, also, wow, Sakoda. I bought the game, took it home, it was shit. So I'm guessing you have to be some sort of Gundam nut job to get any fun out of these games. These days, the mere mention of Insomniac Games is enough for most gamers to get their cocks out. You think Ratchet and Clank, you think Spider-Man, you have this vision that everything they ever did was fantastic. Even if you talk about the Resistant games on the PS3, People will call them underrated, and that there should be remakes. Spoiler, there isn't going to be a remake. But it would take a complete remake to get me to try this game again, because playing it to record this footage reminded me why I put it down and never went back to it. It's a big steaming turd. Even after you remap the controls to be like a modern shooter, it still feels utter jank. I appreciate that the colour palette is a style choice, but it looks blander than Xbox Game Pass. It's just grey and brown and brown and grey it's just boring please don't remake this game but also please don't spend the next 20 years making shitty superhero games either in the west we all know this game is genji days of blade but the only thing anyone ever remembers about this game is its horrendous e3 2006 presentation uh genji 2 is an ashen game which is based on japanese history uh, being based on history, the um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. So here's this giant enemy crab attack its weak point for massive damage. All this is a shame, because it's not as bad as the public perception makes it out to be. It's not some sort of hidden gem, but it is a decent enough hack and slash game. And because I still haven't finished shitting over Resistance for the man, Genji takes a whopping great dump over it. I've heard people defending Resistance, saying it only looks crap because it was a launch game. Well, that excuse can fuck right off now, because Genji blows it out the water in terms of graphics, and that was also a launch game. You may not have known, but this is a sequel to a Sony first party PS2 game. It's a shame Sony have never gone back and made a third title. I think there's a lot more that could be done with this IP, but the giant enemy crab meme probably killed it. Now it's time for the interesting history part of the video. The only other disc based game to release on the PS3's launch day in Japan is this, Sega Golf Club. No one ever talks about this game, but they should, if only for its fabulous box art. Look at the Photoshop shine that has been added to those smiles. I was sold on this title through that alone. But let's just go back a step. This PS3 game never left Japan, even though it's a port of a Sega arcade game. A Sega arcade game that never left Japan, but even so, none of the large Sega-based YouTube channels like Sega Lord X have ever covered it and even its entry on Sega Retro is pretty bare bones. It doesn't even mention the PS3 port. The arcade game is one of these network cabinet affairs and you could get a special card that you'd insert into the machine to save your progress. So your win-loss ratio and all the unlockables could be stored and you could pick up your progress at any cabinet in any location. The PS3 game is pretty much the same thing, but without any sort of network competitive mode. If you've played everybody's goal for even the old PGA Tour games, you'll work out how to control this fairly quickly. And the game being in Japanese doesn't really make any difference because the big title parts are still in English. This is a serviceable enough golf game with a few interesting ideas like mid-course challenges and a fun item system that has unlockables from other Sega games. If you see it going cheap, 
it's a fun curiosity, but you'll feel mugged off if you pay any sort of decent sum of money for it. And that was the last disc game that came out for the PlayStation 3 on the Japanese launch day. But wait, there's more! However, this was not just the launch day of the PlayStation 3. It was also the launch day of the PlayStation Store, which offered not one, not three, but two oh whole digital-only games. The first was this, Blast Factor. This is a twin-stick shooter. That might not sound too interesting, but this one is made by Bluepoint Games. In fact, it was the first game Bluepoint ever made. On the surface, it's quite a by-the-numbers twin-stick shooter, but it handles brilliantly and feels really good to control. The bomb mechanics are pretty vanilla by today's standards, but it also has this tilt feature, which is really well done, and there's some nice boss levels in there too. The graphics are absolutely pristine, an output at a full 1080p, which ends up looking really good today. It's still a fun little game, but it's not in the same league as something like Super Stardust. As of this video, you can still buy this game. It's only £2.49, and that's about right for what this title offers. Although, these days, you might not even have to pay that, if you know what I mean. The other digital game and final game on this list is Mainichi Ishio, and it's a free of charge live service game that features the official PlayStation mascot, Toro Honore. Now, I've already covered this game in detail on a previous video, so rather than just retread old ground again, I'm just gonna recycle some content. On the 11th of November 2006, Toro entered the HD generation with Mainichi Ishio on PlayStation 3. As well as high quality visuals, the other big change is that this was a free to use live service game. And I say was, because as with all live service games, they eventually shut down and this one's no exception. But lucky for both you the viewer and me the video creator, I did actually play this back in the day, so I can try and tell you about my experience using it. Try it is the right word though, because yes, although I do have the trophies for playing this game on my main PSN account, I'm trying to recall what happened in a game I played 14 years ago, so my memory's a little fuzzy. But the main bulk of the game is that you'd log in and Toro and Kuro would present a sort of news report show where they'd tell you about events going on in Japan. If I remember correctly, an overwhelming amount of what they would report on would be various restaurants, what food they served and different PlayStation games coming out. You didn't have any of the Tamagotchi style gameplay of the previous games, no. Mainichi Ishio was mainly a daily event broadcasting live service application. Although this did evolve over time and other things were added like mini games and decorations for Toro's house. The decorations were themed around reported events. So if you logged in and watched a news report on the new Siren Blood Curse game, you can now put a Siren post up in Toro's room. It was a fun little window into events and culture in Japan, as well as Japanese PlayStation game releases. Quite a few, never of which saw release outside of the country. What was weird though, is that on the UK PlayStation Network, and other countries too, you could get Mainichi Ishio card decks decorations for your vehicles in Ridge Racer 7. As with every other Toro game so far, it was never released outside of Japan, but you could go onto Ridge Racer 7 and still download these decorations, and this is the equivalent of You will never get this, you will never get this, la 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 la. Over time, all the extra features that got added, mini games you could play, and Toro storylines that got squeezed into the game made the whole thing quite messy to navigate and had gone well beyond the original vision for this title. So they shut it down in 2009 and created a whole new Toro live service, which was worse. Video ni comment o nokoste, ii ne, botan o oshi, tomodachi ni sumete kara, dojikebab o kodokuste kudasai.